Curious Minded Friends, I'm Dr Becky, welcome back to my channel. Now I usually talk about things that we understand in science on this channel, or things that we know about, but today I want to talk about things that we don't know. And to be honest, that's kind of the most interesting bit about science, the things that we don't know. Now there are things that we don't know that we don't know, but there are also things that we know that we don't know, so unsolved mysteries. So to kick this series off, we're going to talk about fast radio bursts. So fast radio bursts are these little pulses of radio waves that we detect on Earth that last for like milliseconds, that we know are coming from space, but we have no idea what's making them and where they're coming from. The first one was detected back in 2007, but it actually was found in archive data that was actually taken in 2001. So it took six years for someone to actually find that this thing had happened. And since then, we've been able to find more in archive data and then also detect when they go off because they're transient. We have no idea where they're going to go off in the sky or when. And we now have about 30 individual detections of a fast radio burst. So for one of these FRBs, we've actually observed it pulsing many, many times over. And those repeat observations have actually allowed us to say, yes, it's actually coming from outside our own Milky Way, in fact, outside Earth as well, and then it's coming from that tiny dwarf galaxy that's three billion light years away. And we call these kind of things in astronomy like transient events, you know, things that aren't always there, they sort of switch on and switch off again. Think of like a, a supernova flaring up in the optical, that's kind of the same thing. People might be familiar with gamma ray bursts as well. This is the super high energy burst that you get from say supernova that we've been detecting for years now. And we, and we think we kind of understand those now, but these FRBs, we cannot explain. So you might think that the strongest source of radio waves would actually be like Earth, right? We communicate through radio all the time, but if you actually look at an image of the sky in radio waves, you'll see how incredibly bright it is, and also how there are dots just scattered all over the plane of the sky. So it's incredibly bright in the centre of our own Milky Way, and that was actually the first radio astronomy detection made uh, by Karl Jansky back in the 20s. And that's actually coming from the supermassive black hole in the centre of our own galaxy. And these things that are giving off radio waves, they're all high energy objects. So they're like pulsars, quasars, uh, the cosmic microwave background even was detected in radio waves as well. And that allowed us to pinpoint the age of the universe and prove that the universe is accelerating, expanding as well. So when you picture radio astronomy, like don't think of astronomers with like their old radios, like twiddling dials trying to get signals from space. Um, you have to picture like huge, huge dishes. So I'm thinking like George Royal Bank in Manchester in the UK, you've got the Parks radio dish uh, in Australia, in New South Wales. And then you also have these huge big arrays of smaller dishes as well, like the VLA in New Mexico. So huge variation in terms of radio telescopes, but radio astronomy is really cool with the things that you can detect. So we find these FRBs distributed completely across the sky, it's not like they're focused in the Milky Way plane, so we know that they're not coming from our own galaxy. They're sort of scattered across the sky, although they are biased to the fact that we have radio dishes that are sensitive to these in specific locations on Earth, so you're kind of biased by whatever latitude that those telescopes are at. But apart from that, they're pretty much well distributed. The fact that they're fast radio bursts, like the fact that they're milliseconds, suggests that the object that the burst is coming from is actually quite small, so it's like a kilometres across. We're talking like the end life of a star maybe, like a, a neutron star perhaps, or a magnetar, which is a really high magnetic field uh, neutron star, or perhaps a pulsar, which is a spinning neutron star. Something like that, which is like incredibly small but incredibly dense, that might be able to give off these, these fast bursts. But the fact that we know that they're also coming from outside our own galaxy and they're incredibly bright and incredibly short-lived means that they're so energetic. Like it's sort of 80 times the output from the sun in a year in a single radio burst. So there has been lots of theories proposed. Perhaps it's from merging black holes or neutron stars, just like the gravitational wave discovery a couple of years ago. Perhaps they have a connection with the gamma ray burst that we've been detecting as well. Perhaps it's an incredibly energetic supernova in itself, or I think my favourite theory, just because it has the best name, a blitzar. 
<laughs> so a blitzar is actually a completely theoretical object. We don't know if this actually happens or not. People think that perhaps a rapidly spinning neutron star, if it's a creating material, gets to a point where it's so dense that it could collapse into a black hole. And perhaps that collapse is what gives off these fast radio bursts. So back in 2010, the Parkes radio dish in Australia, uh, they thought they discovered a new type of FRB. And they dubbed these peritons. And they found about 16 of them. They were very, very similar to FRBs. They were these short pulses of radio waves, but they quickly discovered that actually they were terrestrial in origin. They were coming from Earth. But the fact that they were so, so similar to the FRBs that we were discovering in space was weird. And it took people a long time to figure out what was actually causing this. When they did, they published what is possibly one of my favorite astronaut papers of all time, because what they ended up finding was that staff at the observatory who were on their break when they were heating up their food, if they opened the microwave door before the timer had run out, then a tiny amount of a radio signal would manage to escape from the microwave and it would look just like an FRB from space, except it was from Earth. And this explained all of their observations, the fact that the peritons were sort of semi-regular and the fact that they were kind of the same time every day but not exactly the same so you couldn't quote that it was like a 24 hour period burst which I think is just amazing the fact that it was just staff and microwaves the entire time. So although people don't think that these FRBs are coming from aliens opening their microwaves too soon out in space there are people who have suggested that perhaps these FRBs are alien in origin and have come from other civilizations. And for this reason, SETI got involved in the search. And this is why we have these repeat observations of this single FRB. If you're wondering about its name, it's FRB 121102, which basically means it was first detected in 2012 on the 2nd of November. And they actually detected this FRB 21 times in the space of an hour. And that was just humans actually looking at the data. When they went back and got a machine and sort of trained the machine, this whole idea of machine learning, on this data, they found about 93 in the space of five hours. So our pool of FRBs that we knew about all of a sudden went from you know, double figures to almost triple figures. And they found that there was no pattern in arrival times for these 93 FRBs. There was no patterns in the amplification of the FRBs either. Some of them were slightly brighter, some of them were slightly fainter. And even with these observations, we still don't know what's causing these FRBs. We have a lot more to go off now, and yet it's still not enough for us to definitively say this is what's causing it. The only thing that we now know from these repeat observations is that the FRB had to be coming from a highly magneto-ionic environment. So highly magneto means a very high magnetic field. So we're talking like a million times more powerful magnetic field than the Earth's magnetic field. Ionic just means that the gas or material that's surrounding uh, the object that's giving off these FRBs is ionized. So the electrons that go around the nucleus of the, the atom have been sort of released and so you have like positively charged and negatively charged uh, ions roaming around that gas. So a lot of people think that it could be a brand new neutron star that's in a very high magnetic field and as it sort of settles down after the supernova that's formed it is giving off these FRBs. The only thing though about a really high magnetic field is that we know these magnetic fields have the ability to act as sort of cosmic magnifying glasses in a way. They can artificially brighten the energy that's coming from the magnetic field. So perhaps we're overestimating the brightness or the energy in these fast radio bursts. What we ideally need is to detect one of these fast radio bursts and then see it in say the optical or gamma ray or x-ray and then we'll have follow-up in a different wavelength and so we'll be able to like narrow down where these events are coming from and like what objects they could be coming from as well. That's the dream, sort of a multi-wavelength observation of one of these objects. Because if you remember the big news last year was that when they detected a gravitational wave event they also detected it in optical and in x-ray and gamma ray and so they were able to pinpoint what actually caused the gravitational wave event that they detected. So if we could do the same thing and get these multi-wavelength observations 
of these fast radio bursts, then perhaps we could actually pinpoint what objects these things are coming from. Because at the minute, there is no agreement across the community of what on earth is producing these fast radio bursts. So I hope you liked this weird and wonderful unsolved mystery of fast radio bursts. If you did, then press the little subscribe button down the bottom with the little notification bell. I will see you next week, but until then, Dr Becky, over and out. <laughs>